I first had the idea to research this topic after reading about sharks in South Africa being killed and eaten by orcas, and which I talked about in my video, Disappearing Sharks of South Africa. These orcas have been preying upon seven gill sharks and great white sharks and eating their livers. I thought it would be interesting to find out about some of the other hunting strategies orcas have. Orcas are found in all oceans of the world and occur in a wide range of habitats, from open seas to coastal waters. There are 11 different types of orca and each one has specific behaviours, language, physical differences, habitat and diet. There is debate as to whether these different types are indeed different species. These different types of orca prefer different types of food. Some eat just fish, others eat just mammals, and some have developed unique ways of hunting their preferred food. In the Antarctic, the large type B orcas that live in the loose pack ice have been observed to hunt seals cooperatively, and what follows is a summary of one particular observation. The orcas were seen to work as a team of seven individuals to dislodge a seal that was hauled up on ice floes. They do this by first sky hopping, presumably to assess where exactly their prey is on the floe and the size of the floe. They then go about breaking the floe up into a smaller, more manageable size, by the group all swimming directly at it and then under the floe, producing a wave which tips the ice floe and washes over it, breaking it up in the process. The whales move the ice floe into more open water by pushing it with their rostrum and also by submerging and creating vortices at the edge of the ice. The whales also blow bubbles underwater near the edge of the ice. This creates turbulence which clears ice debris away from the edge of the floe. Four whales then moved away and lined themselves next to each other, all submerged just beneath the water with their left sides facing the surface whilst a fifth whale remained stationary by the ice floe. The four whales then moved towards the floe, whilst blowing bubbles as they swam under the floe. This produced a large wave, which initially tipped the ice floe towards the wave, but then, as the wave went over it, the ice floe pivoted and tilted the ice in the other direction, where the other whales were now waiting for the seal. What amazing teamwork they have! Another example of great teamwork is shown by the North Atlantic Type 1 orca, found off the coastal waters of northern Norway, which feed mainly on Norwegian spring spawning herring. In the morning, herring can be found in shallow waters, before they move down into deeper water for the day. The orcas, working together in pods of 10 to 20 animals, isolate a small patch of herring and herd it to the surface, using a technique called carousel feeding, and keep the school pushed towards the surface. They use bursts of bubbles and flashes of their white underside to force the herring into a defensive bait ball. The orcas then use their tail to slap the herring, stunning them. Scientists have estimated that a whale could stun between 10 to 47 fish with one blow, but the actual number is likely to be around 16. The orcas then eat the stunned fish one by one. The whole process of herding to finally eating can take up to three hours. In another example of cooperative hunting, Transient orcas, also known as Biggs orcas, which range from southeast Alaska to California, hunt grey whales as they undertake their northbound migration between the Pacific Ocean and Bering Sea in May and June. In a four-year study carried out at the western end of the Alaska Peninsula near Unimak Island, the orcas were found to use highly coordinated group hunting to prey upon the calves of grey whales. The mothers defend their calves by placing themselves between their calf and the orca and by using vigorous tail thrashing. This sometimes worked and the orcas would not have a successful hunt. Another tactic used by the grey whales was to head further into shore and if they managed to get into water that was only three metres deep, the orcas would not persist with the attack. The orcas killed the calves by restricting the movement of them, by holding their flippers and snout and drowning them and it is believed that the shallow water reduced the ability of the orcas to drown their prey. It also reduces the number of orcas that can simultaneously attack the grey whale calf and also puts the orca at risk of being crushed or scraped against the bottom. Not surprisingly then, the orcas work hard to prevent the grey whales reaching shallow water by ramming, biting and dragging the grey whale by its flukes and pectoral flippers. Cetacean carcasses sink so the orcas have a limited amount of time to feed on it. 
if it is at a depth greater than 400 metres, the orcas can't dive down to eat it. This may explain why orcas have been seen to only eat the softest parts of the whale, such as the tongue and the lips, which they can easily access. Orcas have been observed to prevent a dead grey whale from sinking by propelling it head first so that it obtained lift from its flippers and flukes, and a calf being driven from deep offshore waters to a depth of 15 metres where it was then killed. If a grey whale sank in shallow waters, ranging from 15 to 75 metres, orcas were observed to stay in the area for one to six and a half hours, feeding on the carcass. The orcas would leave the area and then come back to it multiple times over a period of a few days. In between bouts of feeding, the orcas rest and socialise, a bit like us when we're out for dinner with friends. An example of a hunting strategy which shows a degree of teamwork but not as coordinated, are the orcas in New Zealand, which are thought to be unique in preying upon stingrays. Hunting stingrays is hazardous due to the venomous barbs on their tails, which can injure or even kill an orca. The New Zealand orcas have developed two strategies to capture their prey. Eagle rays are active swimmers, and the orca rams it at full speed to kill it as quickly as possible, whereas bottom-dwelling rays use rocks and very shallow seagrass beds to hide. The orca will pull the ray out by its tail and drag it into more open water. They hold it in place until another member of the pod bites it to death. The orcas have been seen to use the bottom of the sea as a physical barrier to hold the ray against. They have also been observed using bubbles whilst hunting, possibly being used to dislodge the rays, as these rays were then seen to move from their location and subsequently captured. The final strategy I'm going to discuss is unique to the orcas of Patagonia, and that is of intentionally beaching themselves. In Peninsula Valdez, there are beaches that have shallow reefs that are revealed at low tide. Between the reefs are channels which still have water in them at low tide. These are used by the orcas to gain access to the beach and have been aptly named attack channels. The orcas hunt sea lion pups between February and April when they are old enough to start playing in the shallow surf and learning how to swim. In September and October, elephant seal pups are on the menu. Not much is known about their diet the remainder of the year, but it is thought to be various fish species, whales and dolphins. To intentionally strand themselves, the tide, wind and weather conditions need to be just right, and they will typically start hunting from three hours before high tide to three hours after. The orcas patrol the beach, and are able to determine whether adults or juveniles are there. They will only attempt to catch the lighter and less experienced pups where they have a 50% chance of success, as opposed to only 20% for an adult. The orcas swim very fast up the attack channel and grab the seal pup, rolling back into the water with the next wave. Not all orcas in the pod are able to carry out this type of hunting. It is a difficult and dangerous thing for them to do, and the orcas start their training at a very young age. The most important skill to master is calculating how to utilise the waves to reach their prey and how to catch the next wave to get back into the water. Young orcas are also encouraged to play cat and mouse. A pup that has been snatched from the beach is not always killed straight away, but given to a young orca to teach it how to kill it in open water. This entails slapping it around with their tails and letting it go and chasing it before it is finally killed and eaten, which may seem barbaric, but it is a vital skill to learn for their survival. I find all these different hunting strategies fascinating, the way they have been discovered by the orcas and fine-tuned over the years, the fact that some techniques depend so much on teamwork, whilst others, such as in Patagonia, only some of the whales are able to do and they risk stranding for the greater good of the pod. What an awesome apex predator they are. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe, and share with your like-minded friends.